In this question, we have two forces, a 100 newton force acting towards the right and a 90 newton force acting towards the top right at 63 degrees from the 100 newton force. Use a graphical method to find the result force. So this means by drawing and using a scale. So first, I'm going to show you how not to do this. This is the wrong way of doing it. Okay, so you don't just join the tip and tip. Of course, the resultant force isn't towards the bottom, right? It can't be because there is no force going downwards. And neither can the force be towards the top left if you reverse the direction of this arrow because there is no force going towards the left. The resultant force is going to be towards the top right. So first of all, you copy the 100 newton force using the exact same length in the exact same direction and you join them tip to tail like that. Okay, and then you copy the 90 newton force using the same length and at the same angle. So for example, like this. So you need to make sure this angle here is 63 degrees using a protractor and ensure that it's the same length. For example, this, you can, if you count squares, it's four across and eight up. Okay, so the resultant force will be from the tail to the tip like so. Okay, to find the magnitude of the resultant, you need to come up with the scale. So if I measure this, I see that that 35 millimeters is equal to 100 newtons. So I can come up with a scale. That means that one millimeter is equal to 2.857 newtons. So I've just divided both sides by 35. Okay, now using my ruler, I've already come up with a scale now. I can measure the resultant. And the resultant length is 56.5 millimeters. And so if I multiply 56.5 by 2.857, I will get 161 newtons. So this is 161 newtons um, is the magnitude of this. To get the direction, you simply use a trip protractor and measure the angle. So in this case, it's roughly 31 degrees from the 100 newton force. Okay, graphically show that the climber is in equilibrium. If the person is in equilibrium, that means the resultant force is zero. So if you add the forces tip to tail, you should get a closed shape like this. So it doesn't matter what order you do it, I'm starting with weight, I'm adding on the reaction force, and then I'm adding on the tension. And this gives a closed shape showing that the resultant force is zero. Okay, this ladder is at rest. Well, we're going to assume that it's in equilibrium so that the resultant force is zero. We need to determine the missing force. So the missing force is going to be from the ground. Okay, it's going to, the ground is obviously going to be pushing on the ladder. So to find the missing force, we know that it's a rest, so it's going to form a closed shape when we add the forces from tip to tail. So if I start with the reaction force there and add on the uh, weight like this, the missing force that's required to close this shape from the ground is this force, which is actually, you can think of this as a combination, so it's going to be somewhere like this. You can think of this as a combination of a bit of friction and the normal reaction force from the floor. Okay, here we have a rock that's on a slope. Determine the resultant force using graphical method. So again, we're going to just add tip to tail. Okay, so add on the weight, and it doesn't matter what order you do it, the reaction force and the friction friction force there so you can see the shape is in a closed shape and the overall effect the resultant force here is going to be from starting from here going this way so that there is a result of force so it's going to be down the slope and that's going to cause the object to accelerate down the um, down the slope 